It's official. Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and West Palm Beach are the riskiest metro areas for mortgage application fraud. So what does this mean for you? And if you or someone you love plan to apply for a home mortgage, how do you protect yourself? Here with what you need to know about this is Sherry O. Well, that's a dubious distinction, isn't it? Bad stuff. I, I, and you may not get, you may not even know you're getting well, involved. That's what I think is so interesting. How can someone apply for a mortgage and perhaps become part of this whole scheme and not even know it? Right. Well, the first thing is to really know what mortgage fraud is. And it can come in a lot of different flavors. So, for example, identity fraud is if uh, an identity, someone pretends to be someone that they're not. Income fraud is when income is usually overinflated. Occupancy fraud is when you say that you're occupied a home so that you can get better terms and you're not actually occupying it. Property fraud is when the property value is inflated and transaction fraud can happen when you, for example, know the seller. It's not an arm's length transaction and you don't disclose that. Oftentimes these are things that a loan officer might even encourage you to do to get better loan terms or to get approved or you might actually do by accident. Well, how can that happen and people not know it? Well, the thing is there's so many moving parts. There's so many, much paperwork. So, you know, you really need to read the paperwork, not sign anything that has a blank on it, not trust someone that you don't really know. Uh, and then in terms of how the, the transaction is structured, like a down payment, for example. This is one of the more common issues. Oftentimes, kids get a down payment from their parents. They tell the loan officer it's a gift, but there's actually a deal with the parent that at some point they're going to repay, even if it's when they sell the home. If you receive yeah. a repayment under terms like that, as the parent, you're actually participating in a mortgage fraud. So there are all these scenarios. You really need to just be very thorough with what you're doing. Well, how do you prevent it, though? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. If, for example, in vacation areas, vacant homes are a big issue. So you don't want to leave your home vacant where someone can potentially claim it's their home and file a false deed and get you involved that way. But otherwise, reading the paperwork is a really good thing. Because here's the thing, Roxanne. Uh, Best case scenario, they find out before you close and your loan gets denied, which is not very good. But what could happen is once you've closed, these lenders are now doing very thorough forensic audits. If you get caught, you're going to have to repay that loan right away, which could cause problems. If you can't do that and the lender takes a financial loss, they're probably going to uh, report this to the authorities and you could be facing some criminal charges. Well, that's what I was going to, that's the serious It's stuff. worse if you wow. get away with it because they're doing these forensic audits, aside from the ethical issues. So if you think that there's any mortgage fraud involved, if you think something's not right, ask a lawyer, ask a real estate professional, someone you trust whether this is appropriate or not. And if you find out it's not, then definitely report it to the authorities. Maybe someday we can get ourselves off that dubious list. That'd be nice. Is it better to get an attorney? Does that help prevent you from this? Or? If you feel like you need it. I mean, it's a case-by-case -case nice. basis. I think if people are thorough and they know the mortgage broker they're working with, you should be okay. But you've got to not take anything for granted. Cross T's and dot I's. Yeah, because look where we're living. Keep that in mind. Thanks, yeah. Sherry. Sure. for your info. Sure. That's good. That's great.